on a date with your girlfriend talk about good governance spare five minutes out of the date to just talk about bad governance and how our country is headed in the wrong direction when I began my journey of seeking accountability and good governance I never thought I'll be here or even to address you I was a gentleman in my height of life I'm 28 years old now very busy I had my company which employs over 75 Kenyans I had work to do and a lot of it I was not idle but there is a higher calling in this life you reach a particular point where you have to do something that is beyond you when you have to do something where you don't benefit in person when you do something which is about other people and it has cost me a lot as I stand here today I've had threats to my life I've had threats to the life of my family I've had salutes from DCI hung around my home with unmarked vehicles I've had people try to track my phones to hack my phones I've had people searching my IP address when I'm browsing I've had to change cars I've had to get out of my house in somebody's boot the boot of a vehicle I've had to sacrifice my personal comfort and my personal luxury in the pursuit of a dream a dream of a better Kenya that provides opportunities for the young people of this country to live work marry and grow and I'm so sad that that future is being stolen by a criminal enterprise that has taken over our governance and our institutions belittled the value of ethics demoralized people of good integrity they have made a mockery of public funds pilferage wastage corruption they don't do anything if it doesn't benefit them they don't do anything if it is not associated with their stomach so sad that to this extent they still try to lord over us and call us our children we have heard you they listen but they don't do they listen but they don't care sadly you the people of Kenya have enabled them you have participated in the fraud during election you sell to them your vote at 50 shillings at 100 shillings at 200 shillings you have provided with them with the ammunition to kill us we need to change we need a complete overhaul of our society we need to restore ethics we need to restore the value of education we need to restore the dignity of the African girl we need to restore the dignity of the African boy right now our girls are selling their nudes on strip chat and on only fans for perverts to watch just because they've lacked opportunities to grow in this country parents are selling land animals they are selling inherited property to take children to school for what for them to come out here and be useless we have millions of youth well educated but without opportunities where do you want them to take their brains if the Gen Z stop being a problem to the government they'll be a problem to me and you you will not walk around town with a phone you will not have money in your account because they have the IT skills and they have no food they'll rob you and it will not be out of choice it will be because the first instinct of a human being is to stay alive and they must stay alive we have a public debt that is odious borrowed but not to the benefit of the people we have a debt of 10.4 trillion that cannot be traced to a development project 
and we have development projects that are tombstones abandoned graves long forgotten and money that belongs to the public already stolen i've tried to tour the country i've gone to 19 counties do you know where our money goes someone takes public funds puts it in a private account fixed account to earn interest and in a money market fund shame on them shame on them they have made us beggars at home we are beggars in our own country not to go home i mean talk to me like i'm a two-year-old and tell me if we are not living in a crime scene this is a crime scene this country needs to be shut down for innovations even if we talk keep talking about good governance this country is a criminal enterprise you know in the bible there is a legend of the talents what did you do with the ones i gave you before you ask for others what have they done with our money before they rob our pockets for more money this is not a laughing matter it should depress you it should raise your blood pressure to no less than 170. you should be annoyed you should be disappointed but you know what they don't care if you're disappointed they operate on three principles weaponized incompetence emotional fatigue and stockholm syndrome they weaponize incompetence by doing the bare minimum so that we expect the least then they make sure every day we have one corruption scandal for dinner so that we are emotionally fatigued because when you go through pain every day it is a point when you are fatigued with pain then from there they kick in the third strategy stockholm syndrome we are now we the abused are developing sympathetic feelings towards the abuser maybe they are not the problem oh uh, uh, but ni mtu wetu siwezi ni mtu wetu si tuko kwa serikali eh kudhamaki ni wetu the kingdom is ours hii serikali tuko ndani mia kwa mia tuko broad base sindio this is a broad base a bread based government this is a, a government of a collusion of politicians in uh, government and opposition to completely annihilate and, and finish their population now i wonder when we are all dead are they going to govern over graves who will they show off their wealth to because you know wealth is only sweet when you can show it off so when we are dead who is the audience to whom will they show off their 14 million and 17 million watches to whom when we are all dead we must take back our country this is a call for everyone this fight is not for the poor in fact the rich have more to benefit from this fight they should join us they should provide the resources don't just abandon the gen z who have no money for cash, cash bail they are the only ones fighting in the streets they are arrested by police they can't even afford cash bail they are wallowing in industrial prison we have people of means and ability in our country who hate what is going on they should come and defend their nation because when our economy improves they will do better than they are doing now they will enjoy their wealth better if you're running a business this is a moment for you to remember that we are your customers and if we don't have money we will not buy therefore you should care about where we our customers are going to get money from we paid 1.6 billion for our embassy in london and we are still paying 60 million shillings per year for rent at our embassy in london i need to go to pakistan to islamabad where we've paid over 415 million for the high commissioner's residence that is non-existent 
just cracked walls. Isn't it disappointing? These are crimes. This is economic terrorism. And we are just supposed to sit and watch. I'm 28 now. By the grace of God, if I'm supposed to get to 90, for how long do you expect me to watch this rubbish? It has reached a point when I must sacrifice my personal safety and not care about the consequences and say the truth as it is, unfiltered, without fear, with the hope that Kenyans are behind me, that they will not abandon me, that they will stand with me at my hour of need, and if I go missing, they'll stand with my children. Please. Do not be afraid of death. None of us is getting out of this alive. Not even them. We are condemned to die the day we are born. All of us will die. The question is when? And the question is, what did you do with your life? You can live 70 years and do very little. But you can live only 32 years like my late grandfather, Honorable George Morara, and do much. We, the owners of the future of this country, must come out and defend our nation. And the best place to begin is civic education. Without everyone on board, Kenyans, we've lost it. We must find a way to bring everybody on board. Rich, middle class, or poor. Employed, unemployed. Entrepreneurial, unentrepreneurial. Interested in politics, disinterested. Kikuyu, Kamba, Luo, Luya, Taita, Mijikenda. We need everyone on board. We need a resounding majority to say no. That is the only way we will bring back our country. Right now, a majority of our country has political illiteracy. They can be hired for 50 bob to shout at rallies and say, Tunakushukuru sana, sisi watu wa hapa, kweli bila wewe hatujui tunge kwa wapi. Umetusaidia na umetutetea. Umetuwekea mutu wetu katika serikali. Sasa tuko na imani kwamba mambo itafanyika. Can I ask you something audience? You saw the net worth of cabinet appointees. Why would a person with a wealth of 2.2 billion want a job that pays 1.4 million per month? Yet even if he earns a salary every day from now up to 2027, even if we add allowances and say we will earn 2 million, it is 72 million. What is this incentive? What is this love they have for this country? Wow. Exceptional. They love us so much. They cannot believe we are suffering. They would like to help. They would like to do everything in their possible power to assist us. But no, they don't. They are coming to enrich themselves, to enrich their families, to buy gifts for their girlfriends with our public money. I wish they would invest the money they steal in Kenya by building industries and building houses so that people can have jobs. But they take our money to foreign accounts. They take our money outside the country. We lose. We never gain. Kenyans, you might not be me. You might not have the platform that I have. You might not have the following that I do. You might not be as eloquent as myself. But the little that you do, in the space that you occupy, together, it counts for much. You may have only 100 followers. Okay, you may not even have a social media account. But if you speak to your family, speak to your children, speak to your in-laws, Speak to your friends. Speak to someone that you meet at the Matatu. On a date with your girlfriend, talk about good governance. 
spare five minutes out of the date to just talk about bad governance and how our country is headed in the wrong direction. Make sure this message reaches everyone, including those who are disenfranchised in informal settlements, in villages. They've been taught to be obedient to a lie. They are subservient and submissive to a lie. Teach them that corruption affects them. Let them not think that corruption belongs to the TV and the people in Nairobi. Let them know that down in the village, right where they are, there could be a milk cooler a hundred meters away that was provided under the small scale farmers industrialization program that has been stolen right next to their doorstep. Let them know that this road where someone died because they could not reach hospital to deliver on time could be fixed. And as a matter of fact, 1.2 billion was allocated for that road. And someone is enjoying it. Ah, there will, there will be no peace. There will be no peace for the wicked. Yeah. There will be no peace in Kenya for the wicked. The wicked shall suffer. They shall not have peace. In their big mansions that they've stolen with our public, they will not sleep. In those beds that they've imported from abroad, instead of promoting local carpenters, there will be no sleep. They will chase ghosts. They will have insomnia. They will go abroad to be treated and there will be no cure. Nothing can cure incompetence. There is nothing that can cure corruption. There is nothing that can cure bad governance. There is nothing that can cure killers. We have dead comrades. We have dead comrades in morgues with bullets shot by public officers in the name of police who are underpaid. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something you and I can do. Do not be cheated to think that you are hopeless. Do not leave this for the media. Do not leave this to be just a work of the civil society. Do not leave it for the lawyers to read the constitution. It is shocking that our Bible has been translated to every local language, but our constitution has not been translated. We need to translate the constitution to every local language because even the colonialists, even the colonialists that colonized this country, they came lying to us in the name of religion. They have misused the name of our God, this King Saul and his prophets of Baal. They have used, they misused the names of our God by telling us that we are God sent. We cannot be questioned because we have been chosen by God. There is God in heaven. But that God is the same one that gave us resources. He's the same God that gave us minerals. We have gold. We have oil. We have chromium. We have uranium. That is not to the benefit of the people of Kenya. It is being mined, taken abroad as soil. They say we are taking soil samples for clinical research, for geospatial research. Yet they are taking our gold and we are getting using to launder the proceeds of crime. Pastors here in Kenya are laundering corruption proceeds. A church owns a beach plot in Dian. A church owns a mall. A church owns a helicopter. On behalf of who? Politicians. We need our country back. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm passionate about the subject of good governance. I could speak on and on, but limited am I with time.